This lesson deals with the Fourier series of a square wave. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 13, starting at page 16. Given a square wave with an amplitude a and a period t0, let's find the Fourier series with the aid of symmetry. Well, let's sketch out our f of t. Have a value of a, then a value of minus a, a, and minus a, and likewise go in the other direction, minus a, and then a. Our period is t0, and our half period is where we make the transition from a to minus a. We could write an equation for this. Between 0 and t over 2, we have a value of a. And then between minus t0 over 2 and 0, we have a value of minus a. Now, do we have even, odd, or half wave symmetry? If we had even symmetry, we take our f of t and replace t by minus t. So that would bring this term over here. We clearly don't have even symmetry. But if we take the negative of that, then we're over here. And that would be our odd symmetry. And that implies that a of 0 is 0 and a sub n is equal to 0. Do we have half wave symmetry? If you recall the definition, we're going to have to do a, a shifting of t over 2. So let's take our waveform and shift it to the left, half a period. That would put this term over here. And then again, we don't have the same wave shape, but if we take the negative of it, we would. So we also have half wave symmetry. And if you recall, that implies that b sub n is 0 for n even. So all we need to do now is find b sub n for n odd. To find the value of b sub n, let's go back to our definition of the Fourier series where b sub n was defined to be 2 over t0, integral over a period of f of t times the sine of 2 pi n f naught t dt. f of t has two values. Between minus t0 over 2 and 0, it has a value of minus a. And then from 0 to t0 over 2, it has a value of a. Let's break that integral into two pieces. Recall that the integral of the sine of ax is a minus 1 over a cosine of ax. In case here, a is equal to 2 pi n f naught, and x is equal to t. So we have this term here, minus a. And then the integral is going to be a minus 1 over this term, which is 2 pi n f naught, and then times the cosine of 2 pi n f naught t. And we're going to evaluate that from our lower limit to our upper limit. Same is true for our second integral. We've got an a, and then the integral of this can be a minus 1 over 2 pi n f naught, and then the cosine of 2 pi n f naught t, evaluated from the lower limit to the upper limit. Plugging in 0, we get the cosine of 0, and then minus t over 2, I'm going to plug in for t over here. So I'm going to get cosine of 2 pi n f naught, and then the value of t of minus t0 over 2. I have these constants in front. The two minus signs cancel, and I get a over 2 pi n f naught. So f naught is equal to 1 over t naught, so I get a cancellation of this with this, and the 2 with this. I'm just left with the cosine of pi times n. For the second integral, do the upper limit minus the lower limit. So I'm going to plug in t over 2 for t, and then 0. I can write f naught as 1 over t naught, and I get these two terms to cancel, and the 2's cancel. I have the cosine of n times pi, and the cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. And likewise here, the cosine of 0 is equal to 1. I'm going to show up the algebra. I've got a common a over 2 pi n f naught. I'll pull that out, and I get a 2 over t 0, and I'm left with 1, and then a minus a minus 1, so I get 2. And then I have a minus the cosine of n pi, and then I have another minus the same quantity. So I get a minus 2 cosine of n pi. Remember, we're only finding for n odd, because we've shown that the n equals even is going to be equal to 0. But when n is odd, for instance, when you have 1, the cosine of pi, that would be the cosine of 180, is equal to minus 1. The cosine of 3 pi would be 360 degrees plus 180. So again, minus 1. For n odd, let's get the cosine of pi, which is equal to minus 1. Then I go back in here, and this is going to give me a minus, a minus 2. So I'm going to get a 4, and then bring this term down over here. Get some cancellation. I get the 2's canceling. I get the t0's canceling. I'm left with 4a over n pi. So now I can find my Fourier series. My first term is going to be 4a over pi when n is equal to 1, then n is equal to 3, 5, 7, and so on. My frequency is f naught, and then 3f naught, 5f naught, and 7f naught. One of the things we're going to take a look at in ECE 302 is transistor amplifiers. Let me go back to the previous page. Now if you put a sine wave input into an amplifier, you get a sine wave out. But as you increase the input, the output increases until eventually you hit the power supplies or ground. Very common to create a square wave from an overdriven transistor amplifier. One of the properties of the Fourier series for a square wave is that we have just odd harmonics. So if we overdrive our amplifier, we're going to create a square wave which has a summation of sine waves that are odd in nature. And so you have the fundamental, but then you get the third harmonic, the fifth harmonic, the seventh harmonic, and so on. If you had a one kilohertz tone, you're going to get the 1 kilohertz again, but you're also going to get a 3 kilohertz, a 5 kilohertz, a 7 kilohertz, a 9 kilohertz, and so on, additional tones. And this is going to give you a kind of a high frequency hissing kind of sound because you're getting the higher end of the audio band when you overdrive it. If you get a chance to study vacuum tubes at some point, a similar thing happens, except that when you overdrive a vacuum tube amplifier, it doesn't clip like this, but just kind of bends the waveform. 
So we don't have this predominance of odd harmonics, but really a mixture of all harmonics. This is a very different sound than a transistor amplifier when you overdrive it. These are some of the properties of a Fourier series of a square wave. 